Hello and welcome to Daily Debrief brought to you by People's Dispatch. I'm Shreya and in today's episode we talk about the meeting between Shireen Abu Akhle's family and US Secretary of State Antony Blinken, a phone conversation between presidents of China and US, and activists in the US demanding compassionate release of black revolutionary Mutulu Shakur. Family members of Shireen Abu Akhle met US Secretary of State Antony Blinken on July 26 to renew their demands for justice for the Palestinian Al Jazeera journalist and US citizen who was fatally shot by Israeli forces in May while on assignment. Abu Akhle's relatives had called for a meeting with President Biden when he visited Israel and the occupied West Bank earlier this month. But the request was not granted. On July 4, the Department of State acknowledged that the bullet that struck Abu Akhle likely came from an Israeli army position, but it framed the killing of the journalist as an unintentional result of tragic circumstances. However, multiple reports have dispelled the idea that it was an accident. For more on this, Abdul from People's Dispatch is back with us on the show. So, Abdul, crucial meeting this was. Can you tell us what really happened in this meeting? Also, give us a, you know, a recap of what has been the recent developments after Abu Akhle's killing. Uh, the family members of uh, Abu Akhle met uh, uh, Blinken uh, on Wednesday. And uh, yesterday, they also tried to meet uh, uh, President Joe Biden. Of course, with the other congressmen, they went there. But of course, Joe Biden did not meet. In the meeting with uh, Anthony Blinken, uh, the family members of uh, Abu Akhle reiterated their demand, which is a, a, a thorough investigation into the killing of uh, uh, Akhle uh, in, in Palestine, uh, occupied Palestine in May. Uh, and they also basically uh, be, uh, reiterated their formal objection. Uh, to uh, the U.S. Uh, State Department's uh, report in July, in which they basically seems to give uh, to ha to have given United you know, uh, Israel a kind of uh, a clean sheet, in which they claimed that the the killing of Akle was unfortunate, but it was not intentional. So uh, they basically registered a protest on it, and uh, the family members also uh, tried to highlight that uh, since Akle is an U.S. citizen. Uh, she has every right to get justice as per the U.S. laws and whoever is guilty, uh, and in this case, Israeli uh, uh, military, should be held accountable and uh, uh, the family should be given uh, justice. Uh, they also basically uh, try to uh, uh, problematize uh, the larger approach of the United States vis-a-vis uh, the killing of US citizens in different parts of the world, uh, of course, highlighting uh, uh, their treatment in Israel in particular. There are many instances they quoted uh, in which the US citizens have been killed in Israel and there has been no action taken by the US state, which usually uh, is very uh, particular about uh, uh, its citizens being harmed in other parts of the world. But when it comes to Israel, it seems there is some uh, uh, impunity with, uh, with, which is given to Israel and, and with which it operates. So I think that is what uh, they have tried to uh, uh, emphasize. They also complained about Biden not meeting him uh, when he was in Israel in, in occupied Palestine uh, during his visit earlier this month. And uh, uh, this uh, reiterated that they want to meet Biden uh, anyhow. And to know more on this, Abdul, can you also tell us why U.S. is so reluctant to take a stand on the killing of its own citizen? Uh, there are, uh, if you go by the uh, so-called uh, preliminary report presented in July by the U.S. State Department, it, it says uh, clearly says officially, of course, that uh, 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 Israel of uh, Israel is, of course responsible for the killing uh, which happened uh, but that killing was not intentional that this intention uh, uh, attempt to assign intention to it is of course is a result is a result uh, is a basically a, a result of the long term uh, us israel relationship which we should not uh, uh, forget 
we know that uh, uh, the Israel is primarily a colonial project and uh, it is uh, uh, there in the Middle East primarily with the support of the United States. There has been a strong uh, um, uh, Israeli interest operating within the U.S., which does not let uh, U.S. Uh, uh, take any action against uh, uh, Israel's violation of the human rights, the international law for which U.S. usually try to champion, uh, be a champion in uh, in other parts of the world. Uh, this has also to deal with the Biden's personal uh, uh, rapport with uh, Israeli leadership and is who the entire Zionist project. When he went to Israel uh, in July, he called himself a, a Zionist and claimed that you do not need to be a Jew to be a Zionist. Uh, and uh, a person who is taking pride in an ideology which is considered to be racist, which is considered to be based on a, a basis of the colonial project, uh, 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 that shows uh, uh, the, uh, the deep uh, uh, relationship between the Israeli uh, uh, establishments, the Zionist ideology, and the uh, uh, ruling elites in the United States. This may not have anything to do with the common uh, US citizens, but when it comes to uh, a ruling establishment in US, that seem to be the, uh, some kind of in a very close uh, cohort with uh, 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 Israeli uh, uh, Israel Zionist project, which uh, we can also see how uh, US uh, uh, has uh, time and again tried to protect Israel, not only from uh, uh, the the uh, the regional. Uh, uh, regional hostilities, which is primarily rooted into the uh, injustice done to the Palestinians uh, through the Abraham Accord. We know that Israel, uh, basically what Israeli foreign policy should be is practiced by the U.S. So U.S. is US seems to be uh, also pursuing the Israeli foreign policy and trying to mend its relationship with the Arab countries instead of letting Israel to do the same. It basically, uh, we have the reluctance uh, to investigate uh, Abu Akleh's killing and to kind of uh, uh, hold persons uh, of uh, uh, who murdered her uh, accountable is rooted in this particular uh, context. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much for that update, Abdul. Staying with the US, President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping had a telephonic conversation on Thursday amid rising tensions. The two leaders discussed Taiwan, which has emerged as a hot point after US House of Representatives leader Nancy Pelosi announced plans to visit. China is deeply unhappy over the proposal. The leaders also discussed possibilities of an in-person summit and other issues. Abdul is back with us for more on this. So, Abdul, first of all, can you tell us why are tensions so high right now? Uh, uh, there was a, a telephone call uh, yesterday between the US uh, president and the Chinese uh, president uh, in which uh, China primarily highlighted uh, the its concerns uh, regarding what is happening in, in Taiwan. Uh, as we all know, uh, even U.S. recognizes uh, Taiwan as a, 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 one, a part of China. It is one China policy which U.S. follows. Despite that, uh, there has been attempt by the U.S. administration, particularly after Donald Trump, uh, to kind of uh, uh, create a strategic uh, relationship with, with, tai with Taiwan, supply it, uh, armaments and so on and so forth. They have also tried to uh, now the uh, the U.S. Congress uh, Speaker of the U.S. Uh, House of Representative Nancy Pelosi has announced that she is going to visit uh, Taiwan. It is basically uh, some kind of unprecedented um, attempt to kind of uh, uh, break away from one China policy. It seems, and that basically has become an issue between. Uh, 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 between China and uh, US at the time, because China sees it as an attempt to uh, violate its, its territorial uh, uh, integrity and also an at attempt to provoke it uh, uh, to take cert certain actions. So that's what uh, uh, um, uh, Xi Jinping uh, said uh, in his uh, telephonic conversation with Biden that such kind of moves should uh, will not be tolerated and US should not try to uh, uh, provoke uh, uh, China, uh, because uh, this uh, this is not good for uh, reason, not good for the world. 
uh, uh, Z is was also uh, emphasizing that the uh, U.S. policy uh, of uh, seeing China as a, uh, a strategic competitor, uh, uh, as a country which is the quote unquote any, uh, uh, the most important en enemy, and so on and so forth, is basically a policy which comes from a, 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 a wrong understanding of the world politics. And uh, and uh, U.S. should avoid to do it. Uh, so Biden administration, despite the uh, uh, promises of be, uh, moving away from what Donald Trump his predecessors followed vis-a-vis -vis China, has stuck to the similar same policies of provocation of trade barriers and so on and so forth. Uh, and that basically has is the reason uh, uh, that uh, um, the tensions uh, uh, are increasing. And yeah, despite tensions, uh, it's still good to see these kind of discussions happening between leaders. Do you think these kind of discussions can lead to any fundamental change in terms of how these countries deal with each other? Well, on surface of it, uh, uh, after the, the as per the reports in different uh, media outlets, uh, it seems that uh, Biden uh, ha has tried to uh, uh, convey the uh, kind of uh, agree. Basically, there is an attempt to kind of find a common ground. Uh, 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 there is an attempt to understand the uh, Chinese concern. How long will it uh, uh, last? Whether Pelosi's uh, proposed visit to, uh, uh, to Taiwan will be postponed, will be cancelled. Uh, if certain steps are taken to build confidence, whether the trade barriers uh, which were imposed during Trump administration which basically uh, uh, kind of uh, penalizes uh, Chinese uh, industry uh, for being more uh, productive, for being more efficient, uh, uh, which goes against the U.S. Uh, uh, policies. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, there, uh, it's declared uh, agenda of uh, adhering to uh, globalization. Whether those there will be some kind of structural shift from these kind of uh, rigid uh, uh, policies vis-a-vis uh, -vis China, until that happens, uh, uh, only the telephonic conversations may not lead uh, us anywhere. We have seen what happened uh, uh, de uh, with, uh, between Russia and US uh, uh, in the context of Ukraine, despite the fact that there were many rounds of talks and each time there were there was a talk there was an uh, there was a positive uh, signal coming that uh, the us is going to consider the russian concerns none of the russian uh, concerns were addressed whether the same thing will be repeated uh, uh, again uh, in this context mm -hmm. that has become a major uh, issue of concern uh, uh, around the world particularly those who are opposed to wars and any kind of provocation which can lead to larger uh, human suffering throughout the uh, globe. So uh, Biden has to understand, US policymakers have to understand that uh, 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 there is a limit uh, uh, to rhetorical uh, ge uh, gestures, uh, and particularly when uh, the issues are as sensitive as uh, uh, Taiwan and uh, South China Sea or uh, NATO's expansion, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, the talks, very good that such talks are happening. It's very good that there are positive signals are coming uh, there, but there is a need of structural uh, steps taken, being taken to uh, resolve uh, uh, complicated issues and not to provoke uh, unnecessary reactions. Yeah. Thank you so much, Abdul, for being with us on the show today. And finally, for yet another US story, Activists and supporters of 72 years old black revolutionary activist Matulu Shakur are rallying for his compassionate release from jail after doctors announced he had only six months to live. On July 20, activists rallied outside the Department of Justice in Washington, D.C. to deliver a letter signed by over 200 faith leaders demanding Matulu's release. A former member of the Black Liberation Army, Matulu has been suffering from cancer since 2019. In 2020, early into the COVID-19 pandemic, Matulu applied for compassionate release due to his severe health problems, which was denied. We spoke to Natalia from People's Dispatch to know more about this story.
Hi Natalia, so thanks for being here. Can you tell us who is Mutulu Shakur and what's the latest that we're hearing about his case? So Mutulu Shakur is a U.S. political prisoner. Um, like many U.S. political prisoners, he was a revolutionary activist in the 1970s in the Black Power Movement um, and the Black Liberation Movement with groups like Revolutionary Action Movement, Republic of New Africa, and the Black Liberation Army. Um, and so he shares this similarity with uh, the likes of Mumia Abu-Jamal and Asada Shakur being revolutionary Black activists in the 1970s era. Um, he was also very notably a health worker. He was a central part of the Lincoln Detox Project, which was a project um, led by other revolutionary activists and the Young Lords based out of Lincoln Hospital in New York City. Um, and it took a very radical approach to detoxification from addictive substances. It used acupuncture primarily as a way to wean people off of substances um, rather than the drug methadone. Um, and it was a revolutionary and an explicitly revolutionary project. It included um, physical treatment, but also classes on Marxist theory, Marxist political education, and service to the community. Um, and while practicing acupuncture, Matulu um, not only was part of the Lincoln Detox Project, but he also co-founded the Black Acupuncture Advisory Association of North America and the Harlem Institute of Acupuncture. And so he started out as a political education uh, teacher in this project and then became an acupuncturist and then eventually became assistant director of the Lincoln Detox Project. Um, and the reason that we're hearing about him now is because he's been battling cancer since 2019, but he's just been given six months to live by prison doctors um, due to the cancer that he's been facing. And so his supporters and activists are demanding compassionate release from Matula Shakur. He's now 71. Um, his compassionate release was previously denied in 2020 even though he was still battling cancer, the judge determined that he was not close to death enough. And so now that he is literally at death's door, activists are demanding compassionate release. That's interesting. And on, on the same note, Natalia, can you also tell us what does Shakur's case tell us about the U.S. justice system? Yeah, so the same judge that denied him compassionate release in 2020 when he was battling cancer is the same judge that convicted him um, in like and put him in prison in the first place. So um, the same judge, Judge Charles Haight, also as he was sentencing Shakur, um, and Shakur has spent over three decades in prison at this point, when he was sentencing Shakur, he conceded that um, Shakur was illegally targeted by the FBI's counterintelligence program. Um, he said, Dr. Shakur, um, while exercising constitutional liberties was illegally pursued by federal law enforcement officers and that the rights of Dr. Shakur were violated by the um, counterintelligence program or COINTELPRO. Um, and COINTELPRO, well, in its own words, was a program that existed in the 60s, 70s, and 80s in the United States, which in its own words sought to expose, disrupt, misdirect, discredit, or otherwise neutralize revolutionary organizations in particular revolutionary black organizations. So a lot of US political prisoners ended up in prison because of this movement, um, including Mumia Abu-Jamal, including Rochelle, um, not necessarily Rochelle McGee, but Asada Shakur um, and many others. So this was, this really shows that the state has no problem with pursuing and illegally um, illegally messing with uh, revolutionary organizations and trying to um, trying to nip revolutionary activism in the bud. Um, it really shows that, you know, uh, the FBI will, you know, stop at nothing in order to, you know, maintain um, the status quo in the United States and go after anyone who ha is attempting some sort of radical change in the country. Um, and that says a lot about our prison system. It says a lot about how it was in the past, and it says a lot about how our system is today that these people who were victims of this program are still allowed to um, stay in prison. 
Thank you so much for that update, Natalia. We'll be back for more. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories and updates from around the globe, keep watching our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.